my song doesn't get any more apt for uh, who we are as the Republic. Um, you got to stand for something. Thank you for being on the call. The playback for this call is 424-203-8099, and you just simply punch in the same participant code, 819-054. Tonight we got a special call. Welcome to the weekly recruiting call for the Republic for the United States of America. My name is Kelby. Today is Wednesday, July 27th of 2011. This is an introduction call for all the people of the United States Corporation, its employees, law enforcement, and armed services, and especially for the U.S. Corporation 14th Amendment citizens. The Republic government called the Republic for the United States of America has been re-inhabited. Those are big words in my new life for, for the past few years. We are law-abiding. We're peaceful. And we simply found some truths that we're trying to share with everybody. Get ready to hear things that are going to sound impossible. Get ready to understand that you're about to be a part of history. I welcome you, each and every one of you, to the Republic for the United States of America. As always, before we get started, I'd like to ask our one of our prayer warriors for the Republic, Mr. Robert Zuluaga, to please open us up in prayer. Robert? Uh, thanks, Kelby. I was um, uh, watching a, uh, uh, a series by uh, Andrew Womack and uh, David Barton, and he's talking about the founders and the whole journey of those who came to America in uh, 1560. Uh, he talked about the Geneva Bible and how for 1,200 years during the Dark Ages, there was uh, folks who weren't even allowed to uh, read the Word of God, uh, read Scripture. So the Geneva Bible came out, and uh, all the pilgrims headed to America with their uh, Bible in hand. And um, he talked about how the basis of our government in the United States is, comes out of uh, Exodus, Exodus 18:21, uh, choose your leaders from among yourselves. And out of, out of Isaiah 33:22, we uh, have birth of the separation of the three branches of government. And just on and on and on about scriptural references to how our nation was founded and our constitution was founded. So, um, Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. And we thank you for an opportunity to come together to learn about the re-inhabiting of that which uh, has laid vacant. We thank you, Lord, that those who have gone before us, those who are committed to your way, your walk, and your word, have uh, laid uh, a train track, have laid steps for us to follow in. We thank you, Lord, you're guiding us and directing us and uh, opening the doors of not only opportunity but of understanding that we may truly take back that which has been stolen from us by the devil, the world bankers, the international uh, one world order folks. And we just thank you, Lord. We abide in your grace. We lift you up tonight and uh, ask you to have your way amongst us this evening in our discussion and in our discourse. We give these things to you and give all praise, glory, and honor to your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Zuluaga. I appreciate your words. Uh, ladies You're and welcome. gentlemen, tonight we have a few hosts on the call. Robert Zuluaga, he is the Secretary of Commerce, uh, an extremely intelligent man, and uh, really pro-Republic. He's got a lot of great uh, videos, and uh, in general, the Republic for Arizona has a lot of great uh, education. I believe it's Republic for Arizona dot com. Is that correct, Robert? Or is it dot org? Dot uh, org. Republic for Arizona dot org. Yeah, go there and click on education and spend some time. Those guys have done a fantastic job, and I'm glad to know them all. Uh, we also have historian Ken Cousins on the phone call with us tonight. Um, before we get moving, I'm going to make a quick announcement. Um, remember again that there's a couple new calls, one on Thursday and one on Sunday. The Thursday call is a Republic roundtable. This is where you get to know the leadership in the Republic. We also have a new call on Sundays. It's basically training within the founding documents. Please refer to the home page of republicforthenitedstates.org to get the call information on the bottom right. All calls and times are posted on the bottom right. Um, before I make uh, go into a presentation on the period of history between 1871 and 1944, um, which is really what we're going to reach for tonight, I'd like to open up the floor to, again, Ken, uh, Robert, or any of the hosts that come on to please interrupt, um, uh, announce yourself, and add discussion. It's very important that uh, we all add 
that discussion. We all are included. Um, let's discuss again the time frames. We discussed last week the time frame of uh, history between 1776 and 1871. Remember, this is very important for all new people in the Republic, key words. When a word is applied in a contract, it is the writer's intent of what that word means. Very important as we talk about words, because the reason is many words have multiple definitions. Now, we discussed this last week. I'm going to discuss this again this week. This is critical. The definition of the word de facto, if it's existing in fact, whether legally recognized, in other words, not by right, not by law, we as the Republic are the de jure. The United States Corporation, as you know, as you've grown up, as you've lived under, that never trained us on the founding documents, is de facto. We are the original de jure government that was vacated in 1861, and we're going to talk about that stuff, um, and again, some of the time frames that we did last week. Uh, we're going to blow through them really quickly uh, for more specific review on um, the following, meaning the stuff we discussed last week. Refer to the Republic website, republicfortheunitedstates.org, and click on the weekly calls and uh, review July the 20th of 2011. Remember, this is an important statement. What I'm about to say is uncontestable. It's fact. Period. Try me. And I say that with a smile on my face, but I wouldn't be sitting here as a moderator subjecting myself to threats and so forth if I didn't absolutely believe this is 100% true. So let's blow through the time frames of 1776 to 1871. Again, if you want a more detailed, go to refer to the July 20th call. 1776 to 1860, the original United States was a collection of sovereign republics in a union. In 1860, the last original Congress adjourned. No Congress, no original de jure Congress has ever lawfully convened since that date. In 1860, same year, the southern states left, seven of them. The ability for any president to have a quorum in Congress was now gone. In 1861, war was declared on the southern states. In 1861, national emergency and martial law was also declared. In 1861, habeas corpus was suspended. In 1863, the Lieber Code, better known as General Orders 100, was introduced. This is also known as the first executive order. I'm going to encourage everybody to go Google General Orders 100 book. You're going to find a book that details in 1891, I believe, what that Lieber Code or General Order 100 or initial uh, executive order was. In 1865, the capital moved. The capital was moved to Washington, D.C., a separate country, not a part of the United States of America. In 1871, the Act of 1871, a corporation was formed called the United States Corporation. The United States was incorporated February 21st of 1871. I said this last week, but I'm going to say it again so people have it at the, their fingertips. Here's the law. Here's proof. USC 28, Section 3002, Number 15A. The United States means it's a federal corporation. Uniform Commercial Code, uh, UCC 9-307H, United States. The location of the United States is located in the District of Columbia. What does the word Columbia mean? Again, one of the definitions, goddess of death and destruction. In 1871, the original Constitution government was vacated. Please take a minute and go to house.gov and put in the word Constitution in your search toolbox. This will pull up a copy of the Constitution on the website for the de facto government. As you go through and you look, you're going to see the articles. The first 10 articles are bracketed. Go look up the definition of brackets. It means it's omitted. So they're showing you on the house.gov that they don't accept the amendments or the articles on the Constitution because they never adopted them. They simply are showing you them because it's trying to appease the American people. Remember last week what motivated me personally in coming into the Republic was the symbolism on the streets in Washington, D.C. I don't want to expound on this because it, uh, it's pretty serious. Last week I gave a detailed definition of what's in the streets of Washington, D.C. It is very light and dark. But I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to encourage you to please listen to that audio. 
again from July 20th of 2011. You can find it at republicforthenitedstates.org. Click on the July 20th call. Now, in 1901, the original Constitution is intact. The original Constitution wasn't really removed. It simply had been dormant since 1871. It's still intact today. The fact was made clear by the Supreme Court Justice Marshall Harlan in Downs versus Biddell, 182 U.S. 244 in 1901, by giving the following opinion. Two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, and the other to be maintained by Congress outside independently of, the, of that instrument. Now, <clears throat> what did I do? Please understand, I just said you can look up a Supreme Court ruling from a justice that tells you two national governments exist, and this is in 1901. I can also give you a Supreme Court ruling in, in 1872, I believe, uh, Shelby versus Norby. That's a big one. Take your time and read that one. We'll get into those um, as we go into further training, and uh, they're quite exciting because they give us the freedom that we know we have, and by their own de facto Supreme Court rulings. Around 1910, the Inter International Monetary Fund and the Federal Reserve Bank was formed. This was done in secret under the guise of a duck hunting trip to set up U.S. banking outside of the U.S. jurisdiction. Now read the book of Jekyll Island. I encourage you. The Federal Reserve, along with the FBI, CIA, FEMA, NASA, SS, and many others, are all corporations outside of the government of the United States Corporation. The Federal Reserve is a private banking institution which was not lawfully enacted. Even if they did the voting properly in Congress, and even if the governors did ratify it, they did it in a de facto system of rule and did not have lawful authority over the majority of the people at this time. In 1913, U.S. citizens, as collateral because of the Federal Reserve Act, prior to 1913, most Americans owned clear allodial title. Now, allodial title is a concept in some systems of property law. It describes a situation whether, where real property, land, buildings, and fixtures, fixtures excuse me, is owned free and clear of any encumbrances, including liens, mortgages, and hear me out, tax obligations. Why do you pay property taxes? So, until the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, hypothecated to pledge property as security or collateral for debt without transfer of title or possession. Listen closely. All property within the Federal Reserve of the Federal United States to the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve in which the trustee stockholders held legal title is a United States citizen, which is better known as a tenant franchisee, was registered as a beneficiary of the trust via his or her birth certificate. Like any debtor, the Federal United States government had to assign collateral and security to their creditors as a condition of the loan. Since the federal United States did not have any assets, they assigned the property, the private property, of their economic slaves, the United States citizens, those 14th Amendment citizens, as collateral against the federal debt. They also pledged the unincorporated federal territories, our national parks, our forests, your birth certificates, and I could go into deep about birth certificates, but that is the representation of you and your future work equity, your, your future work efforts. And nonprofit organizations, they pledged them all as collateral against the federal debt. All has already been transferred as payment to the international bankers. Unwittingly, America has returned to its pre-American revolution roots, whereby all land is held by a sovereign, and the common people had no rights to hold a lodial title to the property. Once again, we the people 
are the tenants.